Hello and welcome to lecture 13's R Companion. This one covers split plot design and how to do the calculations in R. Um, let's work through in the book exercise, I mean example 10.7. This will be on page 557, which means that table 10.19 will be the data table and table 10.20 will be the table we're trying to get all the numbers from. So we'll go ahead and start, new script, tile vertically. So of course you could watch me if you want, type in all of the data. Oops. Or you can just trust that I typed it all in and there it is. And of course, we can double check. And finally, we need to specify that pins, cones, and manufacturer are all factors. Now the data is in. Go ahead and just double check that we've got we we have the same numbers. So for the uh, pins, the average energy is for the first one is 383.64, for the second 388.6. For the cones, first set of cones, the average is for, uh, average energy is 368.6, then 409.4, then 384.9, then 388.7, and finally for the fifth, it's 379.0. And then the average energy for each of the manufacturers, for A it's 290.3, for B it's 416.8, for C, it's 434.4. .4. For D, it's 340.3. .3. And for E, it's 448.8. .8. So double check that your numbers agree with mine. And if they don't, change them. Um, we're going to actually use a different package, but I'm not going to tell you what that package is yet. We're just going to go with mod is equal to the AOV. And let's look to see what we got. It's supposed to be energy is the dependent variable, then manufacturer, that's the fixed effects variable, uh, plus pins, which is a random effects variable, plus an interaction of pins and manufacturer, plus um, manufacturer containing the cones, That looks familiar. I found out something. Instead of this colon, you could also do percent in and then percent. That and the colon are equivalent. Then we do a summary. Boom. And so let's go ahead and look at the table, table 1020 on page 558. Um, this will be for the middle part. Manufacturer, 4 degrees of freedom, sums of squares of 184,000, mean square of 46204. There we go. F value of 471.48, uh, p value less than alpha. Uh, pins is 1 degree of freedom, 308, 308, 3.14, and greater than alpha. Then the manufacturer times pins is four degrees of freedom, one seven nine five four four eight four point five eight and point zero zero eight seven. And then cones in manufacturer twenty degrees of freedom, twenty five thousand and change for sums of squares. Mean squared is twelve seventy two. There it is, and then twelve point nine eight for f value and then less than alpha. And mean squared error, uh, which is in the top of the table 1020, 
20 degrees of freedom, 1960, 98. And then if we want to actually uh, recreate that top of the table, we could do the interaction thing. Or you can just realize we've partitioned the, the errors. So this 1960 is unexplained. And then everything above that, everything in blue now goes into the model sums of squares. So just add those up, and you'll get the sums of squares. And then add everything up to get the total. And for the degrees of freedom, the mean squared degrees of freedom is 20. Everything in blue is going to be in the model, 20 plus 4 plus 1 plus 4. And then adding all that will give you the total. And then mean squares is just the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. So we can create that top part of the table rather easily, if we want. The key for that top part is that p-value, quite honestly, because that p-value is the test of that model overall. not not specific parts of the model, but the whole model. So really, all we need is that p-value. And to get that, we even have our, whoa, period, summary.lm of mod 1. And there's the p-value. Notice it also gives us the f statistic of 74.73. So using summary.lm, we can get the important parts of that first at the top part of the table. Using just plain old summary, we can reconstruct the entire top table. Well, everything except for the p-value. So we got the top of the table, that r squared value of 9909, root mean squared, and we got the mean for c2 somewhere. So just using this and things that we've done already, uh, we can get most of that table. In fact, what I have highlighted on the screen gives us everything on that table except for the bottom row. So let's see how we can get that bottom row. Well, we can do it by hand, because we know the difference between the table between the, the, the big table in table 1020 and the bottom is just the denominator. When R did it, by the way, it's not just R. SAS does this too, and all the stat programs do. When R did this for the manufacturer, to get that F value, it divided this mean squared manufacturer by the mean squared error. However, the correct denominator for that manufacturer is not mean squared error, but it's the mean squared for the manufacturer cones. So what it, we, so what this F value should be is just the 46,205 divided by 1272. And we've seen that before. I believe we saw it back in the nested. So we can create that bottom line just by doing that division. So F is going to be um, 46205 divided by 1272, which within rounding, that's good. Or if we want to do it more accurately, we could do this trick. And then the F is just going to be equal to row 1, column 3, divided by row 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, column 3. And then again, the p-value, we can just calculate this way. The F1, that'll be the degrees of freedom for the numerator, degrees of freedom for manufacturer, which is 4. The F2 is the degrees of freedom for the denominator, which in this case is 20, the, the degrees of freedom for manufacturer by cone. Oops. 20. 
and then lower tail equals false. Uh, and of course, I need to do this correctly. Okay, that's better. And there's the correct p-value. Still less than alpha, but it is the correct p-value now. If you want, you could also use the uh, the GAD package. So library of GAD. It does not come with R standard, so you have to install it in the usual way. So, got it. Now here's how you would use it. Um, two two uses for the GAD package. One is to double check your mean square expected mean squared error um, expected mean squares your EMSs. To do that, estimate uh, you would use estimates uh, estimates, and then of your model. And you'd spell estimates correctly. There we go. Hmm. And we have an error. Oh, that's right. The GAD package and all of its functions require that you modify your variables slightly. Requires that you are explicit on what type of variables you have. What does that mean? Well, manufacturer, what type of variable was that? It was a fixed effect. And pins? What type of variable? That was a random effect. And cones, what type of variable? That's also a random effect. So you would define manufacturer, and that's as.fixed manufacturer. Pins, as.random pins, and cones, as.random cones. Then for a reason that will become familiar, uh, obvious later. I'm going to change that to mod 2. I'm going to run those. Notice that if you actually look at the manufacturer variable, nothing's changed that we can see. It's the same variable, it just now has another attribute to it. Now we're going to rerun mod 2. No problem, nothing's changed yet. And then we'll do the estimates of mod 2. And this is what it kicks out. It's got two things here that really are important for us. One is the dollar sign MSC block and the other is the dollar sign F dot versus block. The MSC is the mean squared estimates. Um, according to the book, this area would be referred to as the EMS, the expected mean squares. So the expected mean squared for the residual is just the mean squared error. The the expected mean squared for manufacturer colon cones is that mean squared error plus the variance of the mean the manufacturer colon cones. For manufacturer colon pins, it's the mean squared error plus the variance due to the manufacturer colon pins. For pins, it's the mean squared error plus the variance, the sigma squared, remember, for the pins. And for the manufacturer, it's the mean squared error plus the variance for manufacturer and cones because it contains manufacturer, plus the variance for manufacturer and pins because it also contains the manufacturer, plus manufacturer variance. So this is one way that you can get those expected mean squares. The F versus, that tells us the correct ratios to give us the F statistic. or in the, specifically the, the uh, denominator. So if I want to test manufacturer in cones, I would divide by the mean squared for the residuals. If I want to test manufacturer in pins, I divide the mean squared manufacturer colon pins by the mean squared error. If I want to test pins, it'd be I divide the mean squared pins by mean squared error. If I want to test manufacturer, then I divide the mean squared manufacturer by, ooh, can't be done. Here's why. Here's the expected mean squared for manufacturer. 
contains the variance according to the for the residuals, it contains the variance of manufacture by cones, contains the variance of manufacture by pins, and contains that variance of manufacture. This variance is what we want to get to. In order to get to just that, we have to divide out by something that contains all three of these. Nothing in this list contains all three. Therefore, we cannot test manufacturer. But a related test, and if we really care about that manufacturer effect, we can get rid of the manufacturer by pins. Rerun model two, estimates for model two, and now we look at what is the expected mean squared for manufacturer, just the mean squared error, plus the variance according to manufacturer by cones, plus the variance of manufacturer. This is what we want to isolate, which means we have to divide out by this, which matches this. Which means if we want a, an appropriate F test for manufacturer, it's going to be mean squared manufacturer divided by mean squared manufacturer by cones. Hence, the denominator is going to be mean squared manufacturer by cones. So this is one way of us, one way of keeping us aware of what the denominator should be. And again, if you look up here at the summary, to get this F value for manufacturer, it's divided by the mean squared error. And that's the wrong thing to divide by. It's supposed to divide by the mean squared manufacturer cones. Instead of, instead of oops, sorry, instead of dividing this number by 98, should be dividing by 1272, which is what we did here by hand. Or we can use the GAD function to have R do it for us. Now remember what that F value should be should be the mean squared for manufacturer divided by the mean squared for the manufacturer by cones, which is 36.31, which matches the book. So here's the key. And, and by the way, if we look over here, everything that's now highlighted, some of this is nice, like the estimates. It's nice to remind us of what the denominator should be. But really, we could have accomplished all that just by looking, just by doing this calculation by hand. So it's your choice. And between the two of us, what do I use? I use what's currently highlighted. I do it by hand. Because it's a lot easier for me to do this by hand, because I am aware of what the expected mean squares are. And it's a lot easier for me to do that than to load another package, to find things as fixed and random, even though that is helpful. Create a new model, then check the GA, uh, do the GAD function. So it's up to you in your professional life which you would use. And I think in the beginning it may be helpful to do the GAD package because it will remind you over and over again what your expected mean squares are. So that's it. Um, yeah, uh, that really is all. That's table 1020. And really, I, mean, I gave you that extra part with the GAD package, and it's kind of useful. But really, everything here we've already done before. If we're aware of our model, and if we're aware of what we should be dividing by, then we can do it all by hand using just the AOV function. In the beginning, we may want to use the GAD package, because it will remind us over and over again what we should be using and when. Oh, and I also did the colon in, I'm sorry, percent in percent, that's exactly the same as the colon. So that's the end of this lecture, or this R companion, split plot designs in R. Hopefully it was helpful. Take care.